Hey guys, welcome to Tech Notebook. Today we will be covering how to get started with MicroPython and the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. To learn how to use the Pi Pico, we first need to complete a couple of projects with it. So in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to control an LED light with the Raspberry Pi. The only things you will need are a Pi Pico with pin soldered, a breadboard, LED, resistor, and a computer. So now let's get to setting up the Pi Pico for our project. So the first thing you need to do is to plug in one end of the micro USB cable into the Raspberry Pi Pico. So before you plug it into your computer, you will need to hold the boot select button down. And once you plug it in, the file manager should pop up on your computer. Now we need to download the firmware for the Raspberry Pi. This will allow it to read the Python code that we, we write and it will then run it. So the way we download this firmware is by going to raspberrypi.org. Then we will need to go into the Raspberry Pi Pico section and we can hit get started. And finally, we can download the firmware. So this firmware will be in a .uf2 file. You will need to take that uf2 file from your downloads folder and drag it onto the Raspberry Pi Pico folder. And once you do that, the Pi will eject the drive and it will reboot. So now let's get to hooking up the LED to the Raspberry Pi so we can control it. Okay, so before we get started, you will need to make sure to unplug your Raspberry Pi to make sure that you don't damage anything while we are doing the wiring. So now the first thing we need to do is to flip the Raspberry Pi over so we can see all the GPIO pins. And we will need to take one jumper wire and plug it into ground, which would be GND. And then we need to plug another wire into GP7, like that. So if you can see that, let me just bring it closer to the camera. You can see that one wire is on ground and then the other one is on GP7, which is GPIO pin seven. Okay, so now we can come around to the breadboard. So the way a breadboard works is each of these rows are isolated from each other, but all the pins in one row are actually like connected with each other. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are connected, but this one, this one, and the rest of these are not connected. So what we'll do is we will plug our, our GPIO 7 wire into one row like that, and we'll plug our ground into a row just a few rows down from there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take a look at our LED. So on our LED, there are two leads. If I can get this to focus, we see that there is a longer one and there is a shorter one. So the longer one is the positive and the shorter one is the negative. So what we need to do is we need to put the longer one onto the uh, GPIO 27 one, and the shorter one will be on the row right below that. Then we need to take our resistor, which will limit the current going to the LED, and we will plug it into the same row as the negative on the LED, and then we'll take the other end and we'll plug it into the same row as ground, and you will make sure you'll need to make sure that the LED and the resistor are not touching or else they will short out. All right, so now what we need to do is to plug it in to the computer again. Okay, so now that we've finished the wiring, we can get started with the programming. But in order to program, we first need to install an IDE or integrated development environment. This is what we use to write the code and program the Raspberry Pi. The IDE we will be using is called Sani, and to install it, we will need to go to sani.org and install the version for your operating system. Now you need to open Thani and begin the Raspberry Pi setup process. It's actually pretty simple. First, you have to click on the text at the bottom right corner of your screen, and you will need to click on Raspberry Pi Pico as your interpreter for the code, which just means that the Raspberry Pi and not your computer will be running this code. Now we can start writing the code in the main window. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to import a few modules. The first module is gonna be called machine. So we'll need to type in import 
machine. And this is the library responsible for controlling our GPI opens. The next module is called uTime. So we'll type in import uTime. And this module is responsible for time delays that we will be using in a while loop, which I will explain in a bit. So now we need to create a variable called LED. So we need to type in LED equals and this will basically initialize the pin, which is pin seven, and it will allocate it as an output pin. So we'll type in machine dot pin with a capital P, open up parentheses, type in seven, cause we use GPIO pin seven, and we need to type in machine dot pin with the capital P dot out in all caps. And this pin dot out just means that it will be an output pin. And now we can get started with our while loop. So what our while loop will be doing is it will be alternating the state of our LED from on to off to on to off and over and over again until we actually disconnect the Raspberry Pi from power. So we'll need to type in while true with the capital T. And uh, this condition will go on forever. And in here, we'll just need to type in LED dot value. And if we type in one here, it will turn on. If we type in zero, it will turn off. So we'll type in one to make it turn on. Now we need to add a delay. So it actually stays on for a bit. Let's just say two seconds. It'll stay on for two seconds and then it'll turn off for two seconds and it'll turn on for two seconds again. And it will go on like that. So we need to type in uTime.sleep. So this will delay our program. And we'll uh, set the delay to two seconds. So we'll type in two there. We'll close our parentheses. Then we can just copy these two lines. And we'll just set LED.value to zero, which will turn it off. And that's all we need to do to make our LED turn on and off repeatedly. So now we need to click save. And in this uh, prompt, we will need to click Raspberry Pi Pico since we need to actually save it to that device. So if we just wanted to run this time, we can call this program anything we want. But if we wanted to run every time we plug the Raspberry Pi Pico into power, then we will need to call it main.py. So what happens is the Raspberry Pi will search for a main.py file and if it finds it, it will execute that program. And if not, it will just do nothing until we manually run it in the IDE. So we will call this program main.py and we will hit OK. And we'll click yes since I already have a main.py on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And now if we look down at the LED, it should be flashing. So now if you look at the LED, we can see that it is flashing. And with that, we are done with this project. If you're new here, feel free to browse the channel. If you see something you like, please consider subscribing. If you're looking for something else to watch, maybe check out my Raspberry Pi comparison video, which will be the first link in the description below. With that said, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.